said it already happy new year um 11 days in it's all right isn't it <laughs> so far so good uh nothing bad has happened yet um tomorrow is the 12th of january it's gonna be saturday and i will be brewing the first beer of the year um i think i've mentioned this in a previous video where i've recently gone back to british beers again i absolutely love bitters again uh, my go-to beers this winter have been ESB, Hobgoblin, um, this this is commercial beer, ESB, Hobgoblin and 1845, uh, which I must confess completely passed me by in the previous years. Um, I only tried it maybe four, four, five months ago, whenever it was, I can't remember when, um, and I love it. It's a strong ale, and by that I don't... Uh, yeah, that's how they call it, a strong ale. Um, <laughs> I was going to say, the ABV in that high really is 6.3. Um, and it's one of those beers where I can walk down to the supermarket 10 minutes and just pick one up. Love it. Absolutely love it. Um, and I decided to brew one, first beer of the year. Um, give myself a little bit of a challenge here, because when you Google, you it's not... It's, well, I'm sure many people have brewed it, but I couldn't find a good recipe for it. Um, and on YouTube, there was nothing. So, if you if you're brewing, if you want to brew the 1845 beer, and you've come across this video, hi, welcome to the channel. <laughs> um, please subscribe. Um, yeah. So the recipe, um, according to some guys and some forums. Uh, was actually published in a book called For the Love of Hops. Now, I don't have that book, but Sarah Pantry does. Thank you very much to Sarah Pantry. Uh, goes without saying, once this beer is brewed, bottled, you'll be receiving one of these, definitely. So she took a little photograph of the page for me. Um, the recipe is as follows. Now, they didn't give the exact recipe and grains and all that shit. They give it in percentages, which is a better way of doing it. I actually think it's a better way of doing it because a lot of people, me included, when I when I used to copy recipes, you just, they say 4,500 grams or something and 300 grams or something and you just copy that. And I don't think that's the best way of doing it. I, I think this is the best way of, of actually writing recipes out. So the grain bill is 78% best pale ale malt, which is a uh, Simpsons malt. I'm using Marisotta. Uh, 19 grams of amber malt, two grams of crystal, and one gram of chocolate malt. Now the amber malt, according to the guys in the forum, whoever they are, if you're watching, thank you. <laughs> uh, apparently uh, fillers use Simpsons malt. I don't know anything about amber malts. I've never used it before, but apparently the the Simpsons Amber Malt is different to the others that are available. Is that true? I don't know. But when you actually look at the Simpsons um, website on the Amber Malt, they actually mention that it's used in 1845. So that's what I'm going for. Um, and my usual supplier, <laughs> uh, the Malt Miller, they, didn't, they don't sell that. They don't store it. So I went on Google. Um, and I found um, a homebrew store that I've never heard of before. Uh, they're based up in Scotland in Edinburgh. Whether they're big or small, I don't know. However, I recommend you go and check them out. This is not a sponsored plug, but I'm going to plug them because I think you guys need to check them out. So their website is a pretty website. Uh, it's a nice, nicely laid out. It's actually one of the better of the homebrew websites to be fair and they have a really wide range of ingredients um, the prices are pretty good uh, it's free delivery when you spend over 60 quid so yeah go check them out um, and you know bear in mind yes I always go to the malt miller um, I, I did shop around when I first started home brewing various different places and the malt miller service that they provide is the best 
so I've just been using them for everything. That is dangerous though, guys. <laughs> it is dangerous just to do that. My, This is the message that I want to get out to you, is spread your money about. Um, the reason I say this is because a lot of homebrew stores are going out of business. Um, there is one recently in Bristol. I've never heard of them, but Ed's Bristol, he uses them. Uh, a local one to him and they've had to they've just made the decision recently that they're going to close down because the rent is too high uh, etc etc so the message I want to get out to you yes the mold mill are brilliant but don't always use them um, spread your money about guys just just go and help out some of the other stores um, we don't want to end up just having one two three stores online and that's it we want to have options, don't we? And we want to have competition, more importantly, um, so that they're all in competition. They all lower the prices a little bit for us. Um, these guys are very competitive, actually. Um, I also bought some yeast off them. A quid cheaper than malt miller. Gonna add that there. Um, and it's some liquid yeast. Now, those of you that have been watching my videos know that I've not really had much luck with liquid yeast, and it's my fault because I'm too lazy to make starters. Um, however, the yeast they provided me, it came nicely packaged in a ice pack, so that, that yeast was still cold when I received it. It took four days for delivery, um, but it was still nice and cold. Um, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, and the date, the expiry date is actually May. Uh, so I could have probably got it's a pure pitch WLP002 which I think is the fuller's yeast it's a pure pitch I could have literally just snipped it poured it in and that I, w I would have got away with that uh, but I've made a starter I, I don't want to take any chances anymore so <laughs> to start Hooray. <laughs> first time I've done it for ages um, I couldn't remember how I couldn't remember the ratios of DME and water and I got it wrong even though I asked I still got it wrong and I I wanted to get like a, a litre um, of wort and I only then ended up with maybe 600 millilitres uh, which is nowhere near enough so I made another batch of wort whatever it, whatever you want to call it starter wort so now I topped it up to um, 1,250. Then I pitched the yeast when it went down to like 20 degrees. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of faffing about. It took me like an hour. <laughs> That's why I don't do it. And the bloody, what, what do you call them? I can't remember what they're called now. They're jug things. Begins with E. Uh, it, it, it had a bit of like dirt in the bottom of it. So... I was trying to clean that out with my usual cleaner that I use and then I put some citric acid in there and I was oh, I couldn't find it. I didn't have a brush or anything and I wanted to scrape whatever crap was and all I could find was this whisk <laughs> that I used to uh, do the DME in a pan so I was just oh my god such a waste of time that's why I can't be asked with <laughs> yeast just remembered uh, but anyway, now I've done it, um, I'm going to reuse that yeast, at least four brews. Um, I think I mentioned this already, I'm going to be brewing British beers, not exclusively, um, but at least for the first four to six months of the year, I'm going to be doing British beers. First up, 1845. Second up, I'm going to be doing a chocolate mild, which is still in development, um, but I want something that's just 3.5%. Uh, so I can session that through the week. Uh, I did brew a mild, a ruby mild last year, and it was one of the best beers that I've ever made. I loved it, absolutely loved it. Put it in a pressure barrel. Um, but I'm not going to be doing that this year because that did leak on the carpet. I never did clean that stain. It's still there. I'm going to get that. It's in my man cave. It's just a little small room. I'm, I'm going to rip out the carpet and put wood, well, laminate floor in. I'm going to get. You don't need to know about any of this because it's all boring, but my man cave. <laughs> I will be making improvements to my man cave sometime this later this year because I don't have a brew shed. Um, 
But yeah, so I'm going to be brewing chocolate mild. I'm probably going to be... I've actually took inspiration from another chocolate mild recipe and I've tinkered with it. And I think I'm going to put cacao nibs and vanilla pods. So that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, and then I'm going to be doing another ESP with the liquid yeast. And then I'm going to be brewing a stout. Um, because last year when it came to St. Patrick's Day, I thought, wouldn't it be awesome to have my own stout on keg? So this year I'm making sure I'm going to do that. Um, and I'm actually going to be brewing just a basic dry Irish stout because I've never, never done one. Uh, I've always done like a milk stout, a coffee stout, whatever weird kind of stouts that we do <laughs> with the bourbon and everything. But I've never done just a straight up stout. So that's my plan. But it's not going to be an ordinary stout because if you've been watching Robbie Williams recently, he recently put an excellent video which I'm going to put the link below. Um, of how to properly use nitrogen. Um, and I'm not going to explain because I don't know yet, but I've recently bought the, the, the regulator picture, I think. I got one. Um, they're not cheap, but I really wanted it, really wanted it. <laughs> so I bought one. Uh, I've managed to track down a cylinder, um, so I'm going to be picking that up probably next weekend. Um, and yeah, the, like Robbie says in his video, you, you, you must not use a normal regulator for, for nitrogen. Um, first up, they have a different attachment, so you, you can't really do it anyway, but I'm sure you know you can snip it and play about with it and fit it on and everything. But apparently the most important part is the pressure. The pressure is like twice as much. Um, so if you're going to be doing nitrogen, guys, Robbie <laughs> recommends, bear in mind he does this for a living, fits out um, pubs and stuff, he recommends using a proper regulator. Um, and I will do a video on that when I get round to it. And I cannot wait, I, can't, I just, I've been so jealous. Robbie's just been posting pictures, look at my stout. And, and if you've been watching his videos, you can just see the way, the way it just slowly goes up, just like it does in the pub with a Guinness. It's like, I want that, I want that at home, in my own house, <laughs> on tap. Cannot wait, cannot wait. Um, right, what else are we gonna talk about? The recipe, so, um, the IBUs is 52. Um, and it's basically it's golden, it's EKG. Um, you can play about with that yourself. So basically you put some in the boil and then I'm gonna put some at 15 minutes. I'm not gonna tell you how many grams because it's irrelevant for your kit, but just try and get 52 IBUs. Um, and the hops I'm actually gonna go with, uh, I don't know if anyone else is, is, is like this, but when I see dates on hops, this is complete bullshit I know, but when I see that it's harvest date is two years old, I think they're out of date. <laughs> I know they're not, I know they'll be fine. Uh, unless it's been in my freezer for those two years. I don't know how the companies are storing these hops, so I never, I never ever buy anything more than a year old. Um, and Malt Miller only had 2016 EKG. Bear in mind it's 2019 just. So, what they did have, and I've bought 300 grams of this stuff because I'm going to be using it in probably all the next four beers. I'm going to probably going to use Goldings hops. I've bought some Goldings Cobb 2018 Harvest, um, and these are Brook House hops. I don't know if anyone's heard of Brook House. Um, so Brook House are a farm in Herefordshire, and they use and they're high quality hops processed with care and state of the art facilities. So I'm going to give them a go because that's pretty cool. And the malt mill has gone to all the effort with some gubbins <laughs> about the Herefordshire farm. Nice, really nice picture. Ooh, doesn't it look beautiful? So these are some British hops. I'm going to be using these. I don't know if this is a new farm or an old farm. I have no friggin' idea. I don't know anything about them, but that's what I'm going to be using. Um, and as I'm rambling now, um, thank you if you're still watching. You don't need to watch anymore, but I'm just going to let you know about the water. So, <laughs> uh, 
Um, so the pro problem is with the 1845 beer, it's bottled conditioned commercially. Um, and I would have liked to have done the same because it probably will taste better. And on the bottle there, they put bottle conditioned 100 days. Just drinking a tea because uh, it's actually around lunchtime. <laughs> um, so it would have been better to bottle it, but if I wait 100 days, it's going to be May. And by then, I'm going to be bored of English beers. I'm going to be want to be, want to be drinking the APAs and then the New England IPAs, etc. My, my taste buds are seasonal. So I'm just going to get this on the cake and drink it. Next year, I'm going to do it properly, bottle condition it, 100 days. I'm not, I'm not going to touch it. 100 days, and then I'm going to open one up and share the love. Um, and as for the water, the Fuller's Brewery is in Chiswick, which is only 10 miles down the road. Never been there, have I? Never been there. <laughs> um, but I need to go. So basically their water is pretty much the same as mine. I don't know how they treat it, but I think I mentioned this on the previous video when I made the ESB. Why bother making RO water for these types of beers? So I'm just going to be doing... I'm just going to be dropping in the AWS overnight and in the morning uh, in the mash I'll be putting DWB right this video has gone way too long I know